The first battle with Lucius O'Gratis is over, and man oh man did it not go well for the Clover Kingdom. Our beloved Magic Knights have taken some losses over the course of the series, but now for the first time, they have no Asta to back them up. And so it is time to see how they're dealing with that. We open up Black Clover Chapter 336, the final enemy on the Clover Kingdom capital. The citizens are already talking frantically about what we already know all too well. The Wizard King is now their enemy. People are of course reluctant to believe it. Julius was a beloved hero who stood with them through multiple crises, but enough people directly witnessed Lucius' fight with Asta that it's hard to deny. And if they accept that the Wizard King has truly turned against the Clover Kingdom, well, what hope do any of them have? We go from there to a meeting of the remaining Magic Knights, and it's different. This isn't like the old days where the Magic Knight captains sat around a table and bickered with each other. There was a sort of friendly feeling to those scenes. The captains came off like another squad, butting heads and squabbling but willing to come together when it counted. Here, that feeling has completely vanished. The atmosphere is dark, solemn, and intense. Hell, the captains haven't even bothered to head to the regular conference table, instead coming together in the empty throne room. It underlines the fact that they have just lost their Wizard King, the man who used to take charge of meetings like this. We also have some non-captains in attendance. Yuno has come straight here. He enters the meeting with them, and he is not happy. The young knight of the Golden Dawn looks ready to murder someone. Glaring at the captains, he is that angry with what has gone down. Unfortunately, no one is talking. The room is as quiet as a graveyard. No one wants to tell you know what happened to Asta. We cut a bit ahead. Noel, Mimosa, and Secre have been brought in, having shared what they witnessed of the fight between Lucius, Cicilili, and Asta. Now the group are caught up with us. We see the Black Bulls have not been taken this well. Secre seems mostly composed, but Noel is pretty clearly in shock. Mimosa has dark patches under her eyes. You can tell all three of them have been crying. As much as they don't want to believe it, it's hard to deny what they saw happen. They were right there. They were on the scene before the captains could show up, but they couldn't help. Mimosa tried to heal Asta, but failed. They have to be feeling utterly useless right now. The ever practical Fugelion is he first to break the silence, willing to confirm what everyone is thinking, that Asta is dead. Before he can though, he's interrupted by Rill. In a poor attempt at humor, the youngest captain laughs and comments that Asta's big celebration has ended up turning into his wake. Charlotte is rightfully upset with Rill for the tasteless comment, but on a second look, it is clear the Aqua Deer leader is about as shocked as the Black Bulls. He stammers that this just can't be true, that there's no way Asta's dead. Rill has fought beside Asta more than once. He's got a lot of faith in him, but even he's shaken to hear this. He's struggling to believe that Asta is really gone. Even Yami seems glum, unsurprising. He missed most of the fight, but he got there in time to witness Lucius firsthand. Given how much his relationship with Julius means to Yami, he must be torn up inside. That's before you get into the loss of Asta and the shock of his squad mates. Now looking up from his cigarette, he calls Noct into the room. The vice captain of the Black Bull shows up at once, stepping out of the shadows to join the meeting. Noticeably, he lacks even the polite fake smile he wore last time he came to a meeting like this. He explains his magic for the benefit of the assembled captains. He can walk into the shadow of any person he chooses. Unfortunately, right now he cannot enter Asta's. Noct, ever the professional, outlines exactly what that could mean. Either Asta is incredibly far away, on another continent or dimension, or he is indeed dead. Yuno and Noel both look haunted to hear that. No one is able to find a positive outcome here. Yes, Noel, Mimosa, and Sekre saw that Lily was using spatial magic in the fight. There is a chance she teleported Asta somewhere else. But spatial magic can hurt and kill too. We've seen it do some downright brutal damage in the past. Even if Asta is alive, if he's out of range of Nox magic, he's got to be in a bad situation. He may be locked up somewhere in the underworld, and they've got nowhere to get there. One way or another, Asta is gone. He's not just beaten up, waiting for his body to heal before he can get back into the fight. Lucius has taken him away from the Clover Kingdom, likely for good. The remaining Magic Knights are going to have to face a terrible threat without the hero who's done so much for them up till now. Vigelion speaks up, making the battle lines clear. As much as they care for Julius, from what they've heard, Lucius O'Gratis has to be considered the enemy of the Clover Kingdom. Jack can still barely believe it. He points out that someone having a second personality is just like what happened during the elf incident. That parallel gets a stern look from William. The Golden Dawn's captain is all too familiar with what Julius must be going through right now. Given his own past with the elves, he has to be wondering what the relationship between Julius and Lucius is. Were they in on this together? Which we of course know to not be the case. Nozelle gives the meeting a dose of glum truth. If Lucius has managed to dominate all the devils in the underworld, he is certainly more powerful than the Dark Triad. And the Dark Triad were more than strong enough to be a big problem for the Clover Kingdom. Rill points out how bad the combination of powers here has ended up. 
With Lucifero's near unlimited energy fueling the Wizard King's powerful time magic, Lucius is far too powerful for the Magic Knight captains to face. Virgelion reluctantly confirms Rill's words. He is trying to reason his way through the situation, but there is no way to argue with that combination. This is where Yuno speaks up though, and adds something interesting to the discussion. While Asa's battle with Lucius had been going on, he had been called away to investigate reports of fiendish activity. There he discovered a Dramalak and a group of high-ranking devils. They fled shortly after Yuno showed up. Looking back, this was clearly a diversion organized by Lucius to ensure Yuno wouldn't be there with Asta. But this means something was able to create a tear in the underworld to let so many devils out. Fugelion may have an answer. He muses on Lucius' soul magic going over what the report said. Apparently Lucius can manipulate a person's soul, giving them the powers of a devil. While Fugelion leaves it there, this opens up multiple possibilities. There is a chance the devils Yuno saw might have been Lucius' creations. Even if not, having access to devils is likely part of his plan. It makes sense he'd cause a tear to let devils run free. He needed to make sure he had more raw material for his new paladins. Kaiser is the next captain to speak, wanting to confirm the final part of the report. Judgment Day. Do Lucius and his allies really plan to attack the Clover Kingdom in seven days' time? No one is willing to answer him. They all know that gives them almost no window to prepare to face this threat. Yami just stands there, smoking. We can see how many cigarettes he has gone through just in this meeting alone. The man's nerves must be in shreds by this point. He is trying to take the edge off, but it is doing nothing. And that's when someone finally takes a lead. Clenching his fist, Grand Magic Knight Yuno Grinberial stands before the assembled captains and makes it clear. With Asta gone, he'll have to take point here. We cut briefly to a flashback. It's a new scene to us, but it feels familiar. Asta has just heard about Yuno's most recent promotion to Grand Magic Knight. Of course, he congratulates his brother on it, but doesn't even try to hide his frustration. Once again, Yuno's pulled ahead of him. Still, Asa is not deterred in the slightest. Grinning, he promises to catch up and surpass Yuno one day. And it's here we get one of the saddest moments of this chapter. To me, it was him who was always ahead. As much as he might want to deny it, Yuno has accepted the truth. Asta is dead. Asta meant the world to Yuno. He was his brother, his rival, the man who helped drive him every step of his journey. And just like that, he is gone, leaving Yuno alone. This is tearing him up, but first and foremost, Yuno is practical. If Asta is gone, then he is the one brother left to fulfill their joint promise. He is the one who is going to have to surpass the Wizard King. From there, we cut to… well, it's not so clear. There's Ogratz's family estate, the underworld, Los Noches, wherever we are, it is where Lucius Ogratz has chosen to plant his wizard emperor throne while getting ready for Judgment Day. The same mana lines we have seen on his and Lily's new forms are now running through the throne and ground beneath it. There might be some kind of powerful spell already building power here. Lucius is welcoming back his most important ally, a Dramalak. Also here to greet the devil appear to be four paladins flanking the final Wizard King's throne. The two on Lucius' left are kept in shadow for the moment. On the right, however, we can see Sister Lily and Damnaito Kira. That's one more potential leader of the Clover Kingdom gone. Kira was the head of Magic Parliament and his scale of magic was potent. If Lucius's other paladins are equally strong, this force alone is going to give the Magic Knights a very hard time. Adramalak is here to report on Yuno. He's likely just gotten back from leading that diversion Lucius sent him on. Given the Devil's apathetic attitude to the fighting during the Spade Kingdom raid, he seems surprisingly worried about the Prince. He tells Lucius that Yuno has gotten significantly stronger during the time skip. Apparently, he was able to kill a whole group of high-ranking Devils in the blink of an eye. It's not clear if any of the group that set out with Adramalak actually survived. Given that Addy was the one who retrieved Lucifero's heart for Lucius, securing his current power and making this entire scheme viable, I wonder if he appreciates being put in Yuno's firing line like this. Because yes, Yuno being this crazy strong double slayer really shouldn't be too surprising for Lucius. Even before the time skip, he was a significant threat. Yuno was the only magic knight who took out a fully manifested devil host back in the Spig Kingdom without help. Xenon Zogratis was host to a powerful devil, one of the three rulers of the underworld. Lucius himself called Zenon the best devil host of the Dark Triad, second only to him. Logically, Yuno is someone the oldest Zagratis should be very scared of. He probably could have killed a Dramalak if the devil had stuck around. However, Lucius isn't worried at all. He claims to have cast tens of thousands of predictions to calculate the future. Only one of these gives the Clover Kingdom forces the upper hand against him. Fans had been wondering if Lucius had more control of Aceroth's time magic than Julius did, and this is certainly suggestive. Julius could only stockpile time freezing a person in place, and redistributing it to others. He wasn't able to see the future like this. But Lucius is the devil host, the one who struck the bargain with Aceroth. It makes sense he'd have full control of the devil's magic and be able to pull some feats Julius couldn't. 
However, this line also shows us a pretty crucial limit to Lucius's abilities. It provides him some ability to measure odds. It makes it hard to truly surprise him, but fate is not inevitable. Shonen heroes have pulled through with far worse odds than 1 in 10,000. Depending on what happens, the odds might get even better for our heroes. If Lucius' predictions only take into account people and actions he is aware of, there is a chance he could be blindsided by a significantly cunning plan. All the same, Lucius' focus is on Yuno. The one feature he has seen that gives the Clover Kingdom any kind of chance in this fight apparently revolves around Yuno. It makes sense he'd be well prepared for the coming fight. He talks a bit about the uniqueness of Yuno, the fact that surrounding him that other characters can't match up with. Yuno bears two grimoires, a four-leaf clover, and a spade. He is by technicality the son of the Elven Chief, chosen by Sylph, and heir to the Spade Kingdom. He is as royal as you could possibly get. We get two very nice pages after that. They're matching headshots. First with Lucius looking as smug as ever, proclaiming that he will crush Yuno Grinberial for the sake of world peace. Then it is Yuno, set and determined, swearing that he will defeat Lucius and become the Wizard King. Our two combatants are absolutely ready for the coming throwdown. And it is here at the end of the chapter with our biggest line thoroughly drawn, we get the biggest shock of the whole thing. With a whoosh of air, we leave the brewing war between Yuno and Lucius to one side and finally check in with our boy. Yes, it is Asta. The hero of the series, repeated savior of the Clover Kingdom, the man who will become the Wizard King. We are going to finally see what happened to him after that spell last chapter. And it turns out he has epically faceplanted on a sandy beach elsewhere. Now on account of his most recent fight, Asta is in bad shape. We see his grimoire fallen open in the sand beside him as the waves lap over his body. His back is heavily stained. That's pretty worrying when the only serious wound we saw him take against Lucius was to his front. He was knocked into a building during that fight, but still. It looks more like he's just been left there, bleeding out for a while. Thankfully, someone has found him. We see a silhouetted figure looking down at Asta, framed by a rising sun. The stranger notes Asta's arrival without much shock. They sound more like they finally found their dropped cell phone rather than a mostly dead body. It seems like they were expecting to find Asta somewhere around here. Given this presumably new character's clothes, the bonsai in the background, and the familiar messy hair, it seems pretty clear that Asta has finally arrived at the land of Yami's ancestors. This chapter is mostly build up, setting up plots to deliver later on, but it does a good job getting us hyped. It's a little hard to know where we'll be next time. Will we get into Asta's adventures in a new land, or will we be sticking with the Clover Kingdom as they try to take down Lucius? What are you guys looking forward to the most? Asta's potential training arc and development as a swordsman, Yuno's battle with Lucius, the revelation of the other new paladins, or something else. Please let us know down below. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.